Hey there, this is James with Penner Trailer Sales. I'd like to put a video together today that's essentially a buying guide for equipment trailers. Regardless of what brand you may be looking at, different features, options, and configurations that you should be aware of. First of all, we'll talk about the suspension, starting from the ground up. With the suspension, there'll be two primary different categories of suspension systems that you'll find. Sprung suspension, a, a suspension that utilizes springs, and then a torsion suspension. Spring axles have two uh, variations. There's an eye-to-eye -eye that uses shackles at the end of the spring, and then there's a slipper spring where there's a bolt through the front of the spring, and then just it slips and rides at the back of the spring. Both of the spring axle configurations use an equalizer between the axles, which allows it to compensate for uneven ground or if the trailer frame is not parallel with the ground. Torsion axles, on the other hand, are solid mounted to the frame and only have a radius arm that turns, and they do not have an equalizer in between, so they don't do as well compensating for uneven ground or for a trailer frame that's, that's not parallel to the ground. The, the, the drawback to torsion axles is that specifically in that it's easy if you're going through an approach or through a dip, it's easy to have the full load of the trailer suddenly carried on one axle. Uh, or if the trailer is a little high in the front, the front axle will be light and the brakes could skid the tire and put a flat spot on your tire. And also, torsion axles are actually more susceptible to bending. They're not quite as rugged as what a straight beam axle would be on a spring suspension. The next thing to consider will be the frame construction. This trailer here is constructed with C-channel. Now with C-channel, you'll, you'll generally have a tongue component this trailer has a wrap tongue, and on any brand trailer that you're looking for, you really want to look for a wrap tongue um, in the C-channel configuration. And what that means is that the, C, the, the tongue member comes back in a V, comes back under the frame of the trailer, and then is wrapped back to the axle. And so that naturally gives, with your platform of your trailer and the tongue, it gives it plenty of overlap, makes it a quite rigid configuration. If the tongue comes under the trailer and ends just partway under the trailer, that is generally not as, as a strong of a uh, structural design. Another common frame design with equipment trailers would be an I-beam trailer. I don't actually have an I-beam trailer on the lot to show you, but in that case, the I-beam frame and the tongue are all uh, integral together. They wrap and the I-beam carries back through across the axles, much as the C-channel does. Either the I-beam or the C-channel trailer is a good trailer design, solid, strong trailer structural design, as long as with the C-channel, it has that wrap tongue I referred to just earlier. With equipment trailers, there's some basic deck configurations to consider. First of all, primarily, there's a fixed deck. That's a deck that's solid, probably has a two-foot dovetail on the back, but it's just a fixed deck. Most commonly with equipment trailers, you'll find pine to be a pretty standard flooring option. Uh, the, the most common options would be pine as a starting place. Oak would be an upgrade. Blackwood is a product that's wood with a layer of rubber uh, fused on top of it. And then you can also have a steel deck. Pros and cons with pine, you get fairly good traction, but the shortest lifespan dry rots, maybe even rots, breaks through, has, a, has the lowest strength and life cycle. Oak, I feel like is ideal because it's generally rough cut, so you have good traction. Oak is very weather resistant. Oak is very strong. So that's a fairly long-term, very durable floor. Blackwood, personally, I don't prefer because for blackwood, they sacrifice some of the thickness of the wood to be able to have that quarter inch of rubber. So it's actually less wood, less uh, strength there of any application. And then finally, a steel floor trailer is typically going to be a diamond plate steel floor. And that's very durable, um, will never rot naturally, probably has the longest lifespan. However, it can be slick, especially in wet applications. If it's, if it's rained or there's mud, you get your the least amount of traction actually on a steel floor trailer. So depending on your usage, there'll be different considerations to think about. Next is a gravity tilt. 
In this case, I already have it functioned. There's no power unit on here. It does have a hydraulic cylinder underneath that acts as a dampener, but is not a power unit. So once you unlatch the latch on the other side, you would stand on the tail. It'll slowly let you down. Drive a skid steer on here. Once you get past the tipping point, again, that cylinder will act as a shock to slowly bring you down. With the length of trailer, this fixed deck, we carry max D primarily. The tilt deck can be either 16 or 18 feet long. Because of the geometry that's needed, that stays the same. It's either 16 or 18 feet. So the longer the trailer gets, the longer the stationary portion gets. Um, but the fixed deck will stay the same. The one drawback there is if you're wanting a long trailer in gravity tilt, may not be a good fit because it requires the axles to stay pretty close to the rear of the trailer. So these are good to about 24, maybe 26 feet long uh, because of that constraint. Next is power tilt. You can actually option a gravity tilt trailer with a power unit on it. And so in that case, it's the same exact configuration you see here, but you'll have a button in the uh, a remote in the toolbox that will power function this gravity tilt. And finally, this is a full power tilt. And in, what I mean by that is the full deck tilts with power. Uh, gravity, a full deck tilt is not an option for gravity because it needs to be balanced, but you can get an equipment trailer in a full deck tilt of which this is an example of. With fenders, you wanna see a stout fender because remember with loading equipment on here, um, width is gonna be a close tolerance. A skid steer is gonna fill up most of this width. So it's gonna, in the life of the trailer, you'll find yourself contacting the fender. You try to avoid that, but it's gonna happen. So you want a trailer that can withstand a bit of use and abuse as it were. This is referred to as a double broke diamond plate fender. Uh, it's fairly rigid. It can take abuse, a uh, fair amount of abuse, but it'll also bend as well. If you see a smooth uh, teardrop type fender, those tend to be a lighter gauge fender. You wanna see this double broke diamond plate fender. It's more or less an industry standard. If you have a full width trailer or a 102 wide trailer as commonly referred to, you'll have a drive over fender. But drive over fenders look very similar to the double broke diamond plate we just talked about, but the material is gonna be heavier and this angle will be more of a slope for driving to, to uh, facilitate driving over it with say Jeep, uh, rock buggy, side-by-side -side kind of application like this. These are commonly referred to in the industry as a buggy hauler. A universal consideration as well, regardless of the size or weight capacity of equipment trailer that you're looking at, is the tail configuration. Very commonly, you'll see a dovetail. This particular trailer is dovetail with a slide out ramp in the back. Simply slides out and hooks on. Obviously, there's two of them here. With a slide out ramp, you'll also want a stabilizer jack mounted here. The reason stabilizer jacks are important with a trailer that has slide out ramps is because there's nothing here to help support the weight of a piece of equipment as it's driven onto the trailer. If by contrast, you have a stand-up ramp, stand-up ramps are generally built with a knee brace. So when you fold the knee brace down, or fold the ramp down, as you drive the piece of equipment up onto the trailer and the suspension squats or, or compresses, this knee brace will bear on the ground and carry the weight as it's being driven over. And it's important because the frame, it's a lot of cantilever force on the frame with all that weight of a piece of equipment, and it's also lifting up quite a bit on the tow vehicle if it's a heavy piece of equipment. So you really wanna look to have some kind of a support here, uh, either through a stabilizer jack or with a stand-up ramp, a knee brace. So now I'd like to take a more detailed look at the different weight capacities of equipment trailers and what options you should expect to see optioned on each respective class. So this here is a five inch C-channel with max D, it's referred to as a C5X. That's a lighter duty trailer. For equipment trailers, you don't really want much less than a five inch frame. Uh, less than a five inch frame, and it's, doesn't, it's not very serviceable for equipment. It may be more of a car hauler. So with this C5X then, it's featured with 5,200 pound axles. So it would have a combined of about 10,000 pounds of carrying capacity on the axles. It has a slipper spring suspension. 
You'll also notice that with this 5 inch frame it's still a wrapped tongue, wrapped all the way back to the axle. We have a toolbox in the tongue. Um, you could save a little bit of money, maybe $150 or so without, but toolbox is very useful for change and straps and so on. On this size of a trailer, the capacity of this is, you wouldn't want less than a 7K drop leg jack. This, this would be referred to as 7K drop leg jack. Really wouldn't want less capacity than that for the weight that you'd be putting on here. Another feature that is convenient is the adjustable coupler. You can set it depending on the hitch height of your truck. This would be a 2 and 5 16th ball as well. And finally, again, because this trailer is packaged more on the lighter duty range, we just have the pull-out ramps here in the back. With pull-out ramps, sometimes they're a side slide or a rear slide. Rear slide is definitely the most convenient because you don't have to carry it as much to stow it. It's just a matter of unhooking it and sliding it back in. Also then, because of the nature of slide-in ramps for support, weight support, uh, this trailer is optioned with stabilizer jacks that can be affixed to the rear. Moving up now to a medium duty trailer. This trailer is optioned with a six inch frame, six inch C channel as opposed to the five. Again, still the wrapped tongue. Uh, has 7,000 pound slipper spring axles. Instead of the five with a medium duty trailer, it could be either a five or a 7K axle. Moving back here to the back of the trailer, We'll see that this trailer ha also has the two-foot dovetail and then also the equipment stand-up ramp with the knee braces to be able to accommodate heavier pieces of equipment being driven up on the trailer. This is now a heavy-duty equipment trailer. This is an 8-inch C-channel frame. It's still a wrapped tongue, just like we saw before. The deck height is slightly higher because it's 8-inch as opposed to the 5 or 6 previously. The axles on this trailer are 8K axles, so it's a combined of 16,000 pounds of carrying capacity on the axles. With Max-D, 8K axles come standard with the 17 and a half inch 16 ply tires. This full tilt trailer here, while it's actually considered a six inch frame trailer, it's built with an eight inch frame underneath because that frame needs to be able to stand alone and is not able to be stacked on the bed frame. So you'll see an eight inch channel frame and a six inch channel frame on the tilt deck. And then the axles, it's featured, uh, optioned with 7K axles. Finally, in a discussion about equipment trailers, a gooseneck flatbed may be commonly thought of as a different class trailer, but it does qualify as an equipment trailer because you can haul equipment on it, obviously. So we'll look at that real briefly as well. First of all, a gooseneck deck over it can be optioned, this one's optioned with 12K axles. It can be optioned with 7, 8s, 10s, 12s, even up to 15K axles. So you have quite a range of axle capacity options on a deck over. The construction is quite different in that it's I-beam, I-beam frame that sits between the tires, uh, needs to sit between the tires because of the depth of the frame. And then the deck is, to be able, is able to be over the tires. So the deck is naturally a full 102, which is the, the maximum width uh, allowable, 102 wide deck. Loading equipment on a deck over of, is of course easier because you don't have the, the uh, challenge of navigating between fenders. So it's somewhat of an easier loading process. Uh, with a deck over, Obviously, the deck height is going to be higher, so a dovetail is particularly uh, necessary for equipment loading purposes to be able to uh, compensate uh, that loading angle for the higher deck. On the other equipment trailers we were looking at, they had a two-foot dovetail. Stand Normally, on a deck over trailer, you'll see a five-foot dovetail. This is a five-foot dovetail. The industry standard is for a what's referred to as a self-cleaning dovetail and that's basically referring to the fact that these angle iron are open so that as you load a piece of equipment on here the mud and whatnot will just fall through won't compromise your traction at all as you drive up the trailer this deck over is configured with a gooseneck hitch uh, it can also be configured with a bumper hitch uh, in fact any of the equipment trailers as we were coming through the different sizes can be equipped with a gooseneck or with a bumper pull but most commonly with the weight carrying that these deck overs will have you'll see a gooseneck configuration also the jacks on this trailer this is a dual jack setup which is standard normal 
on a gooseneck trailer. Uh, these are 10K jacks, 12,000 support capacity, 10,000 lift capacity. That's an industry standard minimum. Uh, could be upgraded to a two-speed Jost or uh, hydraulic power jacks. On all of the equipment trailers uh, I was mentioning earlier, uh, with 7,000 pound axles and up, you really want to see a 10K jack, which would be a single jack for a bumper pull configuration. But for this gooseneck, here we have two jacks. So I hope that was helpful to you as we looked at a broad range of equipment trailers, options to think about, configurations to be looking for. Here at Penner Trailer Sales, our goal isn't to sell you a trailer, but to help you make an informed purchasing decision. So don't hesitate to give us a call or stop by and give us a visit.